can't wait to get back on Saturday morning and sing that full throttle with you and Shalom and everybody here. I cannot wait. It's a tree of life for those who hold fast to it and all its supporters are happy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness and all its paths are peace. Return to Amen. return us to you, Adonai, and we will return. Renew, renew our days of, of as of old. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Oh, thank you. God, so so now we start the book of Leviticus. Janice, welcome. Dr. Weiner, welcome. Welcome. Who would like to start us off reading? Everyone's muted. Ruthie, why don't you go I'll for it? I'll start. I'll okay. start. The Eternal One called to Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting, saying, Speak to the Israelite people and say to them, when any of you presents an offering of cattle to the eternal, you shall choose your offering from the herd or from the flock. If your offering is a burnt offering from the herd, you shall make your offering a male without blemish. You shall bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting for acceptance in your behalf before the eternal. You shall lay a hand upon the head of the burnt offering that it may be acceptable in your behalf in expiation for you. The bull shall be slaughtered before the eternal, and Aaron's sons, the priests, shall offer the blood, dashing the blood against all sides of the altar, which is the entrance of the tent of meeting. The burnt offering shall be flayed and cut up into sections. The sons of Aaron, the priests, shall put fire on the altar and lay out wood upon the fire. And Aaron's sons, the priests, shall lay out the sections with the head and the suet on the wood that is on the fire upon the altar. Its entrails and legs shall be washed with water, and the priests shall turn the whole into smoke on the altar as a burnt offering, an offering by fire of pleasing odor to the eternal. Interesting, it says pleasing odor, okay. If your offering for a burnt offering is from the flock of sheep or of goats, you shall make your offering a male without blemish. It shall be slaughtered before the eternal on the month, I'm sorry, on the north side of the altar, and Aaron's sons, the priests, shall dash its blood against all sides of the altar. When it has been cut up into sections, the priests shall lay them out, the head and the suet, on the wood that is on the fire upon the altar. The entrails and the legs shall be washed with water. The priest shall offer up and turn the whole into smoke on the altar. It is a burnt offering, an offering by fire of pleasing odor to the eternal. If your offering to your eternal is a burnt offering of birds, you shall choose your offering from turtle doves or pigeons. Oh, I don't want them to hurt the turtle doves. The priest shall bring it to the altar. Pinch off its head and turn it into smoke on the altar. And its blood shall be drained out against the side of the altar. He shall remove its crop with its contents and cast it into the place of the ashes at the east side of the altar. The priest shall tear it upon its wings without severing it and turn it into smoke on the altar, upon the wood that is on the fire. It is a burnt offering, um, an offering by fire of 
pleasing odor to the eternal. Um, okay, oh, oh, this goes on. When a person presents an offering of meal to the eternal, the offering shall be of choice flour. The offerer shall pour oil upon it, lay frankincense on it, and present it to Aaron's sons. The priest, the priest shall scoop out of it a handful of its choice flour and oil, as well as all of its frankincense, and the token portion he shall turn into smoke on, whoops, on, wait a minute, on the altar <clears throat> as an offering by fire of pleasing odor to the eternal. And the remainder of the meal. So uh, tonight we're going to go through five different um, sacrifices. Oh, okay. And this is the meal offering. So this is the second one. And as we okay. remember, I think Dr. Ed likes to, to point out that some, some of these are offerings that the priests will eat eventually. But the first one, I believe, is the one that gets completely consumed by the fire so that there's nothing left of it. Isn't that right, Dr. Michael? I believe so. Okay, yeah. so um, okay, so what? Now the meal offering shall be for Aaron and it. Oops, oh, there yeah. you, wait a minute. Did you just? Where are we now? The remainder. Oh, of and the, the remainder of the meal. Okay, now go back up. Offering shall be for Aaron and his sons, a most holy portion for the eternal's offerings by fire. When you, when you present an offering of meal baked in the oven, it shall be of choice flour, unleavened cakes with oil mixed in, or unleavened wafers spread with oil. I wonder why it's unleavened, though. If your offering is a meal offering on a griddle, it shall be of choice flour with oil mixed in, unleavened. Break it into bits and pour oil on it. It is a meal offering. If your offering is a meal offering in a pan, it shall be made of choice flour in oil. When you present to the eternal a meal offering that is made in any way these ways, it shall be brought to the priest who shall take it up to the altar. The priest shall remove the token portion from the meal offering and turn it into smoke on the altar as an offering by fire of pleasing odor to the eternal. And the remainder of the meal offering shall be for Aaron and his sons, a most holy portion for the, the eternal offerings by fire. I just wanted to say one thing. Uh, Go ahead. When I first read these lines a few years back now, I remember it was like summer and um, I was having a barbecue. And at that time, it was like nighttime because I was making dinner for the family. And I would I would smell that roasted meat. Maybe it was lamb or something. And I thought of like God being so pleased with the odor. And I'm like, I too am pleased. This is great. You know, so I felt like I had something in common with the eternal. So it's uh, it's actually There's a lot to be said for animal sacrifices, huh? <laughs> well, well, do you, do you know how they could? You were able to identify a, one of the, one of the princes at that time. They were fat. Ah. Uh, yeah. mm. I mean, they're always eating. I mean, they have every single every single lion here. He, they get in line first. That's right. They had no land and they and this is also part of the tithes, right? This becomes part of the tithes eventually. Oh, yeah. so there's something else that's mentioned throughout this all this time. It keeps on talking about that the blood had to go to the sides. I'd like to know why that was so important that the blood had to be splattered to the sides. Hmm. Does anybody have any idea why that? Because God oh, said uh, you're, so. you're muted, Mike. Uh, Mike. Of that? Okay. Yeah, better. Okay, I'm going to take a crack at it. Uh, you know that um, on these days, you know, whenever you have meat and you want to kosher it, yeah. you have to take the meat and you have to put it on brine. Yeah, yeah, you get it salted. I understand then that. Then the salt extracts the blood. Right. The whole thing is that uh, there was a true prohibition against eating blood or drinking blood. Uh, and ah. so taking these things and splashing them on the sides yeah. to of as much as the blood as possible. Because oh. yeah, the blood is supposed to be the life, like the flesh That's isn't correct. the blood. Right, right, and right, also, right. And also, you're not supposed to eat fat. Well, I according didn't know to that. the Torah. Well, it's not, not good blood to eat of... fat for cholesterol reasons. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we're getting up to 221, I think. Is it 221 where it says you can't eat the blood because the blood is the life? 
at some oh, point, oh, yeah, right, right, right in here. Yeah. You know, that's a quote that that's right. somewhere in this area. Oh, it's, I'm also it's looking the commentary. At, it's the yeah. commentary. Okay. But there You're is something really... about fat too. I know that. Oh, interesting. Because they keep talking about they burn the fat like as a that's what they burn like to make the smell to is mm -hmm. a is a ple pleasing. Odor yeah, to that, the that was another thing that interested me. That you know usually it wasn't pleasing before, but now it's pleasing to God. It's very interesting, and it's interesting they talk about it pleasing to God, not that it's pleasing to you. It's pleasing to God, but you don't think why does God need to be pleased by the smell? I just thought that was interesting. Okay, but I think the fat is part of it though. And, and, and another thing that, uh, you know, uh, we, we read uh, three or four uh, minutes ago, yep. one of the flour that they made was unleavened. Yes, I, I, I was reading that and said, that's interesting because the only time you ever hear about unleavened is when we had a run out of Egypt. So I don't understand why we have unleavened now. It didn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It might have something. Do you think it has something to do with that? That there's a connection between? Uh, no, I don't think so no? at all. No, mm -hmm. not at all. Because the mm -hmm. reason for us going, they always said the reason why we had unleavened bread is we had to rush out of Egypt. We didn't have time to let it rise. That's right. the reason. Right. And, and since Passover is coming up in the next couple of weeks, the reason why we have the matzah. It's because it is unleavened bread because we have to get out of Egypt so quickly. Well, that's what I just said. That's right. what I just said. And, and then all of a sudden in here, it says that uh, as we're well, doing That's why I said it doesn't make sense to, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Make, it doesn't make sense. Doesn't I think sense the people that, the people that had egg mutts, or I think they took a little extra, a few minutes longer before they left. <laughs> The, uh, if I can direct your attention to number 11 on the bottom here, it, it mentions that this uh, this unleavened bread may be a survival of old desert practice. The nomads generally baked their bread unleavened. Ancient oh. customs are often retained in religious rites after they have been otherwise Interesting. Discarded. Oh, so unleavened was kind of a, a, a kind of a common thing. I didn't know that. I always thought that unleavened was only because we had a rush out of Egypt and there was no time to have it rise. <laughs> right. And it also, all of this too has a lot to do with atonement and making certain things are uh, the correct properties for, to be sanctif to be uh, a, a, a sanctification, right? Or, or be a, a holy offering, right? So I think it, this is uh, part of the whole rituals, you know? And, um, and again, if we look up here, the leaven sometimes becomes a symbol of moral corruption or religious rebellion. Wow. That's in later Jewish literature that they say. But such uh, a notion was hardly in the mind of the biblical author uh, in Leviticus. So um, interesting stuff. Um, it says continue? there that some of the loaves are leavened and some are not. You see that? I know. And then it said something about the pan yielding a soft, moist bread. So the pan yields a softer or moister yeah. bread than the, than the unleavened, I would I assume. I don't know. Does that have to do with yeast? Hmm. Well, yeah, but we—I don't know if they were even using yeast in those days. Well, that—that's uh, why that's why it's unleavened, because uh, there is no yeast. There is no yeah, yeast. That's why it's unleavened. But yeah. the, but yeast is everywhere. You're yeah, that's us, you're, oh, yeah, yeah, but you're surrounded yeah, that's by true. yeast now. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand what you're saying, yeah, but, but but hey, that eh, 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 that's not the yeast we're using for making breads. Yeah. Well, they only I, used to, they only needed the rise once, and then they kept the piece of the dough with them all the time, and that had the dough had the yeast. It's like sourdough almost. Hmm. Who knows? That's great. I, I I don't remember when they told me about that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to continue, Ruth? That number eleven. Okay, I'll just continue. No meal offering that you offer to the Eternal shall be made with leaven, for no leaven or honey may be turned into smoke. Or an offering by fire to the eternal. We just that that just explained what we were knowing about. It's interesting. Ding, ding. You may bring them to the eternal as an offering of choice products, but they shall not wholly must. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. They shall not not be offered up on the altar for a pleasing odor. You shall season your every offering of meal with salt, and you shall not omit from your meal offering the salt of your covenant with God. With all your offerings, you must offer salt. 
and they all had high blood pressure. No, I'm sorry. If you, uh, <laughs> if you, if you bring a meal offering of first fruits <laughs> to the eternal, you shall bring new cars, parched. I'm sorry. New cars. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't read tonight. You'll <laughs> bring new ears parched with fire. You will bring new cars. Grits of um, the fresh grain as your meal offering or first fruits. <laughs> Don't make me laugh because I'll start getting into one of these giggle set. Okay. You shall add oil to it and lay frankincense on it. It is a meal offering. And the priest shall turn a token portion of it into smoke. Some of the grits and oil with all of the frankincense as an offering by fire to the eternal. Maybe somebody else can continue reading. <clears throat> Who would like to continue at 3-1? Do you want to try it, Bracca? You're still muted, Bracca. If your offering is a sacrifice of well-being, if you offer of the herd, whether a male or a female, you shall bring before the eternal one without blemish. You shall lay a hand upon the head of your offering and slaughter it at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And Aaron's sons, the priests, shall dash the blood against all sides of the altar. Then present from the sacrifice of well-being as an offering by fire to the eternal, the fat that covers the entrails and all the fat that is about the entrails. The two kidneys and the fat that is on them and that, that is at the loins and the protuberance on the liver, which you shall remove with the kidneys. So there's Gary's. Yeah, fat. there's the fat thing. Yep. You're right, Gary. Yeah. About See the that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. And there we are. Arrows shall turn this into on the altar with the burnt offering, which is upon the wood wood that is on the fire as an offering by fire of pleasing other to the eternal. And if your offering for sacrifice of well-being to the eternal is from the flock, whether a male will offer one without blemish. If you present a sheep as your offering, you shall bring it before the eternal and lay a hand upon the head of your offering. It shall be slaughtered before the tent of meeting, and Aaron's sons shall dash its blood against all sides of the altar. Then present as an offering by fire to the eternal, the fat from the sacrifice of well-being, the whole broad tail, which you shall remove close to the backbone, the fat that covers the entrails, and all the fat that is about the entrails the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, that is at the loins, and the protuberance of the liver, which you shall remove with the kidneys. The priest shall turn these into smoke on the altar as food, an offering by fire to the eternal. And if your offering is a goat, you shall bring, you shall bring it before the eternal and lay a hand upon its head it shall be slaughtered before the tent of meeting, and our own sons shall dash its blood against all sides of the altar. Then present as your offering from it, as an offering by fire to the eternal, the fat that covers the entrails and all the fat that is about the entrails, the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, that is at the loins and the protuberance of the liver, which you shall remove with its kidneys. The priest shall turn these into smoke of the altar as food, an offering by fire of pleasing odor. All fat is the eternals. It is a law for all time. There you go. There's Gary's state. Yeah. Throughout the ages, in all your settlements, you may not eat any fat or any blood. The Eternal One spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the Israelite people thus. When a person unwittingly incurs guilt in regard to any of the Eternal's commandments about things not to be done, and does one of them, if it is in the anointed priest, 
if it is the unknown priest who has incurred guilt, so that blame falls upon the people, he shall offer for the sin of which he is guilty a bull of the herd without blemish as a purgation offering to the eternal. He shall bring the bull to the entrance of the tent of meeting before the eternal and lay a hand upon the head of the bull. The bull shall be slaughtered before the eternal and the, the anointed priest shall take some of the bull's blood, bring it into the tent of meeting. The priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the eternal in front of the curtain of the shrine. The priest shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of aromatic incense, which is in the tent of meeting before the eternal and all the rest of the bull's blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering which is at the entrance of the tent of meeting. He shall remove all the fat from the bull of purgation offering, the fat that covers the entrails and all the fat that is about the entrails, the two kidneys and the fat that is on them and is at the loins and the protuberance of the liver, which he shall remove with the kidneys, just as it is removed from the ox of the sacrifice of well-being. The priest shall turn them into smoke on the altar of burnt offering. But the hide of the bull and all its flesh, as well as its head and legs, its entrails and its dung, all the rest of the bull, he shall carry to a poor, a pure place outside the camp to the ash heap and burn it up in a wood fire. It shall be burned on the ash heap. It is the community leadership of Israel if it is the community leadership of Israel that has erred and the matter escapes the notice of the congregation so that they do any of the things which by the eternal commandments ought not to be done and they realize guilt when the sin where am I? I'm sorry, number 14. When the sin right at the top. When the sin through which they incurred guilt becomes known, the congregation shall offer a bull of the herd as a purgation offering and bring it before the tent of meeting. The elders of the community shall lay their hands upon the head of the bull before the eternal, and the bull shall be slaughtered before the eternal. The anointed priest shall bring some of the blood of the bull into the tent of meeting and the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle of it seven times before the eternal in front of the curtain. Some of the blood he shall put on the horns of the altar, which is before the eternal in the tent of meeting, and all the rest of the blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering, which is at the entrance of the tent of meeting. He shall remove all of its fat from it and turn it into smoke on the altar. He shall do with this bull just as he as is done with the priest's bull of purgation offering. He shall do the same with it. The priest, the priest shall thus expiation for them and they be forgiven. He shall carry the, the bull outside the camp and burn it as he burned the first bull. It is the purgation of, of the congregation. Maybe we can take a break in right here for a second. It. Can we take a break here? Dr. Mike, I picture Dr. Mike doing all this stuff <laughs> because he's the Kohen. That's and then right. I think of Dr. Red because he's a hematologist and all we're talking about is blood and stuff. Well, you it's know what I stuff. would do? You know what I would do? I would take the blood and give it to Ed. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, but you have to understand what they're doing here. They're setting up, they're setting up, uh, not only not only sacrifices to god and then that in those days was the way you prayed you didn't pray there was no prayer we only had prayer after the second temple for any religion it wasn't prayer it was always sacrifice you gave something as a burn but here is a this is this is this is the way they're setting up their their social being here they're setting up the 
they're setting up a, a, a system of a system of a religion and that's what they're doing here some of these things that they're eating yeah really has a has some has some uh origins in in uh public health and whatever but a lot of this is very important that they're just they're setting up these sociological parts of the religion of and there wasn't anything of that at this point in time. And they're writing it all out so people yeah. understand. Uh, at some point, I could give a talk on uh, the laws of the laws of the of of the Bible, which which really has makes a lot of sense. And uh, you know, I could do that sometime if you want to take a break from doing from doing this. I, I could put something together. Uh, Michael Michael Zeitcher and I could do that, but a lot of this has has meaning has has uh, has origins in public health. Right, not eating fat. That's that's amazing. Not to eat the fat. I think that's a huge um, and and also the blood. But I think the fat is most important. Important, right? You don't get the the clotting of the arteries, um, right? Isn't that part of it? Or am well, I yeah? I mean, simple? I mean, yeah. I, it's an issue of raising cholesterol. But then again, I thought of, I thought about this the other day when I looked at this. These people lived into their hundreds, you know. Maybe they had something to. Uh, they didn't eat chemicals. That's why they never had uh, chemicals. They had pure stuff in those well, days. Well, I think mm -hmm. I, I don't think the chemical issue was the issue. I just I, I don't know why they lived so long anyway, or or maybe for some reason, you know. But if. Uh, but yeah, you know, why not eat the blood? That has to, to that has to uh, to deal with. People thought that life was the blood. The blood was the life, not the heart. The blood, mm -hmm. and so it had significance. Mm -hmm. And going so back to what you were saying too, it's this is the it, you can see the rituals that they're um, they're creating, right? They're creating these rituals. You, you sprinkle the blood seven times before the eternal, and that's this is the second time. They talk about seven times. This is like seven times you, you sprinkle the blood before the eternal in front of the curtain. Now, this is to make up for a sin that they might not have known that they committed, right? So all of these things, if you, you're exact, I, I, I feel like I'm uh, kind of almost reciting what you're saying, Dr. Red, is that they're, they're, they're establishing a society with rules and also to be able to sacrifice to god and to thank god i mean they didn't have banks then right so now this is this becomes the tie this the ties of of the whole livelihood of the community is is what uh, my interpretation of it is yeah this is this is this you know and this is this is the first time in history that anybody wrote this type of directions down you know they didn't have this written down in egypt they didn't have this written down any place else this is the first time that they actually got that someone wrote this down as a as a roadmap to what needs to be done in their lives well you know okay and, and mike i think that to summarize what we have seen up until now and we're going to continue it in 22 we are seeing sin offerings and guilt offered. You see that 22 now is guilt offered. Who would like to pick it up at 22? Anybody? Any? I can do that. All right, Dr. Ed. In case it, it is a chieftain who incurs guilt by doing unwittingly any of these things, which by the commandment of the eternal is God ought not to be done, and he realizes guilt or the sin of which he is guilty is made known, he shall bring as his offering a male goat without blemish. He shall lay a hand upon the goat's head and that shall be slaughtered at the spot where the burnt offering is slaughtered before the eternal. It is a purg purgation offering. The priest shall take with his finger some of the blood of the purgation offering and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering and the ignite ignite this i lost where i I'm am sorry and um oh that's that's a that's a ignite the sacrifice as that's, that of the entire people 
No, I'm sorry. Not that's a that's a um, that's a commentary right there. So it goes from and the and the rest of its blood. Rest, rest of, of its blood shall pour out of the base of the altar of burnt offering. All its fat he shall turn into smoke on the altar, like the fat of the sacrifice of well-being. The priest shall thus make expiation on his behalf for his sin, and he shall be forgiven. If any person from among the populace unwittingly incurs guilt by doing any of these things, which by the eternal's commandment ought not to be done, and realizes guilt, or the sin of which is one is guilty is made known, that person shall bring a female goat without blemish as an offering for the sin of which that one is guilty. The offerer shall lay a hand upon the head of the purgation offering. The purgation offering shall be slaughtered at the place of the burnt offering. The priest shall take with his finger some of its blood and put it on the horns of the altar burnt offering and all the rest of the blood he shall pour out of the base of the altar. The offerer shall remove all its fat just as the fat is removed from the sacrifice of well-being and the priest shall turn it into smoke on the altar for a pleasuring odor to the eternal. The priest shall thus make expiation for that person who shall be forgiven. If the offering one brings as a purgation offering is a sheep, that person shall bring a female without blemish. The offerer shall lay a hand upon the head of the purgation offering and it shall be slaughtered as a purgation offering at the spot where the burnt offering is slaughtered. The priest shall take with his finger some of the blood of the purgation offering and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering and all the rest of his blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar and all its fat and the offerer shall remove just as the fat of the sheep of the sacrifice of well-being is removed and this the priest shall turn into smoke on the altar over the eternal's offering by fire for the sin of which is one is one is guilty the priest shall thus make expiation on behalf of that person who shall be forgiven and everyone says amen okay um, michael is there any, in the commentary are they saying anything at all about the word purgation let me see let me look back one page here uh, Okay, the, the, the word purgation means to clean. Clean. To cleanse. Okay. Cleanse, yeah. Uh, and expiation, as you can see in here, uh, you know that, that, that uh, you see on the 20? Mm -hmm. Make expiation. So the, it, it, in some cases it's an expiation, in some cases it's a purgation. Mm -hmm. So depending upon the sin. Expiation that, is for atonement and return, like uh, to do tshuva. To do tshuva, right. 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 Divine forgiveness. Forgiven. Salah. You know, we, we see these words and, um, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to look them up and try to figure out what it is that they're trying to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, they're penalizing feels... people. They're right. penalizing. They're showing, you know, a goat in those days was worth a ton of money. Mm -hmm. It was a big deal, and the goat gave them, you know, milk. It gave them whatever. And if they did something bad, they got to realize they're going to learn. They're going to lose something material. Material. Mm -hmm. So this is a big deal, and they're they're mm -hmm. they're they're not only losing something material; they're doing it publicly. Well, that's a good point. That's a good point. And um, and I remember Doctor Doctor Michael. Um, a couple of weeks ago, brought up the fact that the rabbi, uh, you brought up the fact about some of the um, some of the guilty parties would get stoned or you know some other things that were very hard to understand. But they didn't have any jails back then. They didn't have, they have no jails. They're on a they're on a mission to cross the desert. So that unfortunately they had to do, you know come up with a plan to um, you know have justice. I suppose it was pretty. No judge or a jury. <laughs> All right. It was desert justice, I suppose, and uh, right. Hashem. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, where are we? So, this is the last uh, chapter. Does anyone want to take it? Uh, how about Annie? If 
uh, 5-1. Or does anyone want to say anything else? Janice, you, how are you doing, Janice? I'm sorry. You have to You're unmute. Muted. Okay. <laughs> You're still muted. <laughs> She's probably not used to it. No. Oh, there you I'm go. Listening. Okay, great. And, and um, this is good. Great. And, uh, <laughs> so uh, is this the Torah portion for this week? Yes. 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 Okay, so that's what you usually have every week. Yes. Right. Okay. That's and, good. And I think we lost Cynthia for a minute there. I'm like, where's Cynthia? <laughs> uh oh. Well, if Cynthia's gone, she told me she still had to do some articles for her paper. Oh, okay. Uh, she said she might have to disappear. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, it's good to see her. When one has heard a public imprecation, but although able to testify as having either seen or learned of the matter, has not given information and thus is subject to punishment, or when a person touches an impure thing, be it the carcass of an impure beast or the carcass of an impure cattle or the carcass of an impure creeping thing, and the fact has escaped notice, and then being impure, that person realizes guilt, or when one touches human impurity, any such impurity whereby someone becomes impure, and though having known about it, the fact has escaped notice, but later that person realizes guilt, or when a person hey, utters on, an hold oath. On I hold, hold on for a minute, guys. What does imprecation mean? Imprecation. Hold on. Oh, Impre that, okay. We see it right there. Once it's heard a public imprecation. So what does imprecation mean? Against one who withholds testimony. <laughs> well, close enough. It's a curse. Oh. So in this particular case, we're talking about a spoken curse. Somebody okay. has, has given a curse in a, as part of a speech or conversation or something. That's what imprecation means. <clears throat> okay. Look at how many words we're learning today. Yes. I know. We're increasing our vocabulary. <laughs> so you, if you withhold, if you witness something and you withhold evidence, you're cursed. That, that's mm -hmm. where we get here. It's supposed to. Where would we leave off? Number four? Yeah. Yes. Or when a person utters an oath to bad or good purpose, whatever a human being may utter in an oath and Though having known about it, the fact has escaped notice, but later that person realizes guilt in any of these matters. Upon realizing guilt in any of these matters, one shall confess having sinned in that way, and one shall bring as a penalty to the eternal for the sin of which one is guilty, a female from the flock, sheep or goat, as a purgation offering, and the priest shall make expiation for the sin on that person's behalf. Interesting, though, sometimes it's a male an animal, sometimes it's a female. So it has to do with the, the sin or the guilt that's going on. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. that it, 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 yeah, okay. It's interesting how, how that becomes determined is what I'm, I'm interested how why female is. No gender gen discrimination. Males and females both get sacrificed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is interesting. Okay. But if one's man's means do not suffice for a sheep, that person shall bring to the eternal as the penalty for that of which one is guilty, two turtle doves or two pigeons, one for a purgation offering and the other for a burnt offering. The offerer shall bring them to the priest who shall offer first the bird for the purgation offering, pinching its head at the nape without severing it. He shall sprinkle some of the blood of the purgation offering on the sides of the altar, and what remains of the blood shall be drained out at the base of the altar. It is a purgation offering. The second bird he shall prepare as a burnt offering according to regulation. For the sin of which one is guilty, the priest shall thus make expiation on behalf of that person who shall be forgiven. 
And if one's means do not suffice for two turtle doves or two pigeons, that person shall bring an offering for that of which is one is guilty, a tenth of an apha mm -hmm. of choice flour for a purgation offering. One shall not add oil to it or lay frankincense on it, for it is a purgation offering. The offerer shall bring it to the priest, and the priest shall scoop out of it a handful as a token portion and turn it into smoke on the altar with the eternal offerings by fire. It is a purgation offering. For whichever of these sins one is guilty, the priest shall thus make expiation on behalf of that person who shall be forgiven. It shall belong to the priest like the meal offering. If we, can the, just, if, if we can just uh, stop in here for just one second. Mm -hmm. You know, we've gone, I, I, I don't know for how long, but you know, when, when you're having fun, you know, time flies. <laughs> but this is the longest part shot in the entire tape, uh, in the entire talk. Really? Yep. I didn't think it was as long as some of the others that we've done. <laughs> no, but, well, we, we haven't finished yet. Oh, right. <laughs> so, so, this, this, in terms of the number of letters uh, and words and things, it is by far the longest part shot in the entire Torah. Wow. Wow. I like what Dr. Ed was saying, too, um, about how this is all playing out in public. So everyone knows each other's sins, right? Or how people are guilty of things. I mean, we have that in courts, but I'm also thinking like in the Catholic and the Roman Catholic tradition, the priest would, I mean, they changed this around, but they used to sit in little confessionals. I don't know if you're familiar with this. Sometimes it's in, in movies. They sometimes do this where a person, a character will go to the priest and confess something. But this is interesting that this was all out in the open. Yeah. Um, and and right. my, since, since we're coming to number 14, mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at something. Up until now, we have been told, you know, do this, do that, do the other things, follow the following principles. This is the first time now that he says, God speaks to Moses and say, go and tell the Israelites. See that? And the eternal one spoke. This is the first time that Moses shows up. Oh, yeah. In the, I see, I see. Yes, 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 yes. That's great. Do you want to continue, Dr. Mike, on that part? On that yeah. point? And the Eternal One spoke to Moses saying, when a person commits a trespass, being unwittingly remiss about any of the eternal sacred things, one shall bring as a penalty to the Eternal a ram. Now we're talking about a ram. Mm -hmm. without blemish from the flock, convertible into payment in silver by the sanctuary weight as a reparation offering. So this is now a reparation offering. Uh -huh. That person shall make restitution for the remission regarding the sacred things, adding a fifth part to it and giving it to the priest. The priest shall make expiation with the ram of the reparation offering on behalf of that person who shall be forgiven. So the expiation is like the amendment, you're amending them. Yeah, I see. I right. understand. Yeah, yeah, I got it. No, okay. Uh, you know, this for that. You know, that yeah, right. Are yeah. there rules coming for the people that don't do this by accident? Wow. That's good a good question. one. That's a good one, Annie. Good question. We'll have to find out. We'll have to keep on reading and find out. Stay <laughs> tuned. Just, I just noticed it's all about, you know, they didn't mean, they didn't realize it. They didn't mean it. They didn't, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, so, you know, or they realize it after the fact. Yeah. As, I'm just wondering about people that, you know, just. Good point. That make I, a bad well, choice. There might be something on purpose. <laughs> As we go on, I'm starting to see something about deceitfulness and stuff. So let's okay. read on and see what happens. Okay. okay. And a person who, without knowing, sins in regard to any of the eternal commandments about things not to be done, and then realizes guilt, in other words, realizes his guilt, yeah. such a person shall be subject to punishment. That person shall bring to the priest a ram without blemish from the flock, or the equivalent as a reparation offering. For the error committed unwittingly 
the priest shall make expiation on behalf of that person who shall be forgiven. It is a reparation offering. Guilt has been incurred before the eternal. So there, that's it. What's part of your answer, Annie? Part of the There's answer. part of your answer right there. No, because it's still the unwitting. Yeah, still yeah. Unwitting. Without knowing it. Without knowing it. They didn't oh, do you're it talking on about somebody who's actually doing and knowing it. Oh, I see. Right. I, I that think thing. people choose to do bad things sometimes. Oh, we haven't gotten okay. to that. <laughs> well, I'm sure, wait a minute. I think it's coming now. Hold it's on. Coming, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll it's, coming it's coming up. It's coming up. It is coming up now. You're you going to yeah. see it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a point in um, emphasizing it. The right. eternal one spoke to Moses saying, when a person sins and commits a trespass against the eternal by dealing deceitfully, deceitfully right. with another in the matter of a deposit or a pledge or through robbery or by defrauding another or by finding Something lost and lying about it. In other words, you found it and you didn't tell Ooh, anything. that's nasty. If one swears <laughs> falsely regarding any one of the various things that somebody may do and sin thereby. When one has that sin and, and realizing guilt would restore either that which was gotten through robbery or fraud or the entrusted deposit or the lost thing that was found or anything else about which one swore falsely that person shall repay the principal amount and add a fifth part to it that's your punishment the fifth part one yeah. shall pay one shall pay it to the owner without realizing guilt so in other words as long as, as long as you return the money and, and give him a percentage 20 percent then you're, you're you're done then a person shall bring to the priest as a penalty to the eternal, a ram without blemish from the flock or the equivalent as a reparation offering. The priest shall make expiation before the eternal on behalf of that person who shall be forgiven for whatever was done to draw the blame uh, thereby. Let me make a comment in here. You remember that uh, Maimonides talked about the fact that there are 613 commandments? Right. Okay, don't call them commandments, call them rules, regulations. Whatever, yeah. Uh, you know, whatever it was, the major uh, because of the fact that we don't do these types of sacrifices anymore, many of those 613 commandments or rules we just don't follow, right? And that doesn't mean we're going to be punished for it because no, it's not, correct. yeah, that's right. It's because it's not, it's not, it's not something that we do today. Because just like you said, Dr. Mike, it's that. Uh, no, I, no, no, I'm sorry. Ed said this, that all of these like sacrifices were before prayer, but now we pray. So that's different. So though some of the 613 we don't do, there are some of the 613 we do do, but not the ones that since after the second temple was destroyed. Yes, and, and, you, and, and you remember that, uh, you know, the way just, just so that, uh, you know, we're all in, on the same page. We were doing these type of sacrifices through the second temple. That's up to the then second the temple. Second temple was destroyed. Destroyed, the then everything seven, stopped. And we could no longer do it there. Then we substituted all of these things for but what prayer. we do now, which is prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer, right. Do you realize that this is the first time in history that civil and misdemeanor crime and its penalties were listed out? You know, in, yes. in, in Egypt and in other areas, that you did something like that, they kill you. And right. they say, wait a second, these are civil disobediences, right. and these are misdemeanors. And it's for the first time, this is the first time in history, this is big stuff. This isn't just, you know, uh, well, you're going to give, the, you're going to slaughter this cattle. This is actually, you know, this is a monetary and civil and misdemeanor law that they're actually putting it out there. Before yeah. that, it was never done. The king well, was actually, just having it was, uh, that, Wait, Ed, you're wrong about one thing. What's the name of those laws before the Torah? Um, what, what, what was the guy? Um, Noah. Oh, my. Noah. What, Noah. Who, no. Noah. No. What was it? Uh, oh, God, I Noah can't think of the name. Noah. What? What, Rocco? Noah Hyde. N -O -A -H. No, no. H. No, there was another name. Oh gosh, I can't think what it is now. There was another set of rules before this, and I'm trying. 
that had to do with um, uh, punishment and and yes, I know what you mean. I'm, I'm, it's on the tip of my pen. It's my tip. And oh, I can't believe I can't remember his name. However, um, however, yeah, you know, this is an. You, First of all, it's it's you know this is really spelling it out. This is really and the six thirteen really weren't laws. They were some. They have been explained to me as mitzvot yeah. rather than not laws. And it's a they big were a deal. Mitzvot. They were it's mitzvot. a mitzvot. They weren't laws. Mm -hmm. I, uh, are, you, are you guys talking about the the begunis that remember? Are we talking about the code of Hammurabi? Yes, yes, that was what I want. Thank you so much. I'm, my mind is not like it used to be. Thank you, Dr. Mike. I appreciate it. That's I, I don't read. know when the date of Hammurabi was. But it was before this, I was told. I oh, was I told. I don't before. know. I don't know. Oh, wait. I, at, at least at least 800 years before this. Yeah, yeah. It was way before this. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was way before this. So the, the, that whole thing was, he had, he had also a set of, laws and stuff and, and, and to follow up on i think that what we're all saying is that uh, there was a time when whatever your you were, you know whatever sin or wrong you committed the punishment was arbitrary is whatever somebody decided your punishment was going to be what ed was saying is that this is the first time that we say for this yes. problem, this is what you're going to get. For this problem, this is what, and so forth and so on. So that you I see. know ahead of time what the punishment was going to be for your infraction. Right, 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 right. I, I understand now. And Thank the other you. thing, too, that we are truly living in a huge period of fraud right now. There is so okay. much fraud being committed. So, oh, yeah. So I'm just going to lay it out there because I do believe in the Bible that Anybody that's perpetrating fraud is going to have to give a fifth, not only the fraud, but then on top of that, a fifth of whatever they took, because it, it is in the millions. It's just, it's unimportant. Yeah, but what, what if they don't believe it? <laughs> I mean, that's you, but not... No, I, I know, that's me, but I believe. <laughs> <That's you. Yeah. laughs> so eventually, as the wheel spins, I believe that, that uh, that's going to have to be paid somehow, somewhere. Right. <laughs> but anyway, that is our portion yes. for this week. Wow, well, we, I think it's finished. interesting that the things that it doesn't tell you that that the civil ones it tells you what you have to do for the civil ones, um, and that lying is number one, the, the first thing that you do. I mean, I think you know we consider that oh, you know, it's just a little white lie, whatever. <laughs> you know, like We don't consider that to be like a, you know, up there with stealing, up there <laughs> with, you know, some of the bad, bad, bad ones. But I think you guys always teach me that a lot of the things that are in the Torah are about our words in what we say and how we, you know, sometimes even more than actions because... You know, if you speak ill, if you condemn someone, if you make an accusation or whatever like that, that costs somebody, you could, you know, it's not like now where they have the, the rules and they find you innocent and everything like that. It was like you could make an accusation and somebody could die from that accusation if it was false. Right. Well, the other thing, too, is today you can actually get out of even murdering somebody if there was a what do they call it the shadow of a doubt not something doubt i forget what it's called in law when beyond it's, a reasonable doubt beyond a reasonable doubt and that i don't ever remember so much of is in this day and age compared to when i was a little kid i used to watch perry mason and they never used that expression <laughs> perry mason's day. i know it's, it's just a tv show but it really kind of showed how things changed in how we perceive things today you can get out of anything today I mean, I, I believe there's a lot of people that are guilty of a lot of things that they're getting away with. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> Why don't they what have um, rules? What, are there rules for like the other the other things that are on the Ten Commandments? Well, that we're, that we're, they're still they're, we're still covering things, though. It, it'll come up. Okay. It'll come up. It'll come up. This is just the beginning. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> We got a lot time. of rules to go through. Yeah, absolutely. we have a lot to learn. We're all a new, a new um, civilization. <laughs> yeah, I think the rules. <clears throat> I don't know if you can hear me. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. I think the rules kept um, and made good people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and you really had a high price to pay for those days when yeah. you had to when it was fair. Right. Yeah. Everything. And and there was a lot of honor. Right. People came forth. So this is the backbone of Jewish people. Good character. Yeah, but there's plenty of Jewish people now that are doing things that aren't so. Know, in the back, you know, if you yeah. read the Torah. Right. You should think of what you're doing. Maybe right. we're not doing that now. But you should be think of what you're doing. That's true. So this is good. And then you get it on Monday for this week because it's the Torah portion. So right. I'll look at it for more and go over, but it was really good. I enjoyed it. You made me smile. And that's <laughs> <laughs> That's we do, great. We yes. try to have fun. We try to have fun. Yeah, we do. We, <laughs> we have a lot of fun. I have to see humor in everything. That's how okay. I get through my day. <laughs> and I can't wait till we can get back to the temple. Yeah, but this, yeah I can't wait cool. for those days too. <laughs> Mike, Mike, before we finish, I have a very quick uh, legal um, presentation to make to you. Okay. Um, whenever, if if you go to court, and if it is a civil problem then what you have to do is show whatever the problem is as a preponderance of the evidence if on the other hand it is a criminal thing where they can actually do capital crime then it has to be done beyond a reasonable doubt oh okay i oh. never understood that okay. okay 100 guilty people go free than an innocent man convicted all right. Say that again, Ed. Say that one more time. It is better than 100 guilty people go free than one innocent man convicted. Oh, my God. oh interesting. Convicted of a crime. Convicted of a crime. And, uh -huh. uh, uh, you know, as, I, as, as a, my brother, uh -huh. many of you know my brother, who's a murder attorney. Uh, yeah. And, you know, who was, who, uh, prosecuted mass murderers like Milosevic. You know, yeah. it only takes one person. It only takes one person to hold out to to uh, to not convict. Uh, I know that you're taking a course in leadership, uh, Reverend Bodo, but, uh, <laughs> you know, but, but I, ha I spent one whole week in a leadership course for high level high level executives and we spent the whole week watching and discussing the movie 12 angry men oh i love that movie i well, love that movie we spent we spent 40 hours dissecting 12 angry men right and uh i said when i first sat down and they said that's what they're going to do i said this is going to be the biggest waste of my week except they were paying me to be there so, <laughs> and, and it was in some place like Dallas, Texas or whatever, but we, it was fascinating. It was fascinating. The, the subtleties in, right. you know, everybody you know, where, you know, 11 people were going to convict and then it was 10 and then it was, it was all I around. know, I remember that. I, I loved that movie. I loved it. It was so and, great. Uh, uh, well, 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 Henry well, Fonda. Hmm. Was yeah. it? Uh, that, that, that was a great movie. And, and you know who else was in it? Um, oh gosh, what's his name? Oh, I'm so bad with names. I know who it was, but I can't tell you. <laughs> Go ahead, Doctor Mike. While Ruthie's thinking about Gregory Peck or whoever it was, <laughs> uh, you know, um, Ed, Ed said that you know he learned a lot from a movie. Uh, one of the things that I remember when I was uh, going to law school and we were talking about the uh, civil procedure, you know, what you have to do in court and what you can present, what you cannot design, the other thing. You know the movie that helped me the most? 12 Angry Men. Vinny. What? Your cousin Vinny? Remember, remember my cousin Vinny? Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. Mel Melissa Tomei won Best Actress. <laughs> you, you know you what movie is being quoted all the time now is, uh, is Crocodile Dundee, number two. <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of quotes in that that are being quoted now in the in the executive area. 
So that's interesting. <laughs> you can learn a lot from movies. I learn a lot from movies. Yeah. In, that, in, in the leadership course that I, I just took, and I took the final last night, I was up till burning the midnight oil again, up till 1.35 this morning. Wow. Doing my final. It was on my own my own time, unfortunately. So, so, so Mike, you but it's, it's called, uh, let me just make my point. It's called valuing the dissenter. Valuing the dissenter is <laughs> what um, the 12 Angry Men is all about. And it's, Correct. it's encouraged. It's encouraged in leadership because when you listen to the person who's against everything, you always learn something. Either okay. the person's a genius or they're crazy. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, in, in Talmudic law. Happy Shabbos. <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. Mike, Michael, before we leave, you have to tell us. Think about the questions that you had in your exam. Tell us which question you thought it was the toughest. Oh, oh boy. Um, well, there Why was... are you going to want to be a clergyman? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? Are you out of your mind? You want to be a clergy person? Um, we had, a, we had a, a question about white fragility, which was a little tricky to, to answer. And I mean, because everyone's got their opinions about it, but it's... Uh, it's something to think about, white fragility. That That's something that came out in the last uh, year or two. Well, the last year it became a big deal because of the George Floyd murder. Um, but uh, it's, and to answer that question, I mean, it's just what is it and why is it important? And um, it's a, it's kind of a big deal. And it's, uh, it's, what I find is that it's important to know for white people that they're part of a culture. I mean, I think, I think, for white Christians, they don't think that. They just think, whatever. I mean, I know that as Jews, I'm imagining that you probably think that you're part of a minority in some regard, so it's slightly different. But for general, I don't know, you know, I don't want to make any uh, misrepresentations, but uh, generally speaking, for white Christians, they don't think of themselves as having culture. They just think the way we are is the way we are, and the world has to turn itself to face us and to kind of mold themselves to shape our reality so it's kind of a now, big I, I understand that because my my son-in-law has somewhat of that attitude right and that's yeah. a, and the big problem with it and i'm going to say the big problem with not knowing that they're that we're in a culture i'm going to i'm going to throw myself in there even though my wife my former wife was african-american and I've always been trying to escape white culture, I think, in my life. But uh, as I end up at the at the temple, hey, hey, hey! <laughs> I love Gary, my brother. And uh, but um, I will say that that's the most important thing is for white people to understand it's just culture, you know, because they feel that it's an attack on them personally. When we say like, okay, let's change the rules a little bit. Let's make sure things are a little bit more equitable here. A little, and then it becomes like, what? Why yeah. do we have to change a thing? And it's and what what is happening there is they're they're losing. They feel like they're losing something, right? So now they're now they're in the process of of feeling they're they're losing and they're going to uh, they're going to there's they get into this conflict where they can't let go of anything. Well, it's like well, it's just culture. It's just our culture, you know. But then they feel like well, there's economics behind it and everything else. So. That's why it can be a real uh, tricky thing for people to like, come on, just uh, let's just think about the culture first. You know, they don't think yeah. they can't even get past that first step. So anyway, it's just some people have blinders on. That's all I look at. It's just blinders. That's all. Mm -hmm. And they, they just can't get past their blinders. You know, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, we've got interesting well, times th ahead of this us. This was a great, a wonderful, wonderful study today. It really was. It was good. <laughs> Of fun, always fun. Thank you, Janice, for coming. And I'm so Thank glad. you, Janice. Great to have Yay. you. Yeah.